So in this segment, we're going to talk about Johnny Mercer's absolutely pathetic performance on Question Time uh, last week. This is embarrassing. His wife's been all over Twitter as well, just attacking, I think, Carol Vorderman and, uh, and other people. And it, I, I don't know what's going on in Bro's life. Um, I don't know if he's 100% here, I'll be honest. But some of the stuff he says in these clips are really bad. Minimum wage was actually bought in by this government. The working wage is, uh, is going up to... It's, it's below where it has to be, but the minimum wage was not brought in by the Tories. It was brought in by, guess who? £10.46 no, later this government. year. It wasn't. It was brought in... Oh. Uh, the living wage was brought in by the Labour brought in the... The, the living wage is just marketing, because it's not a living wage. You can't live on it. The minimum wage. Yeah, you said minimum wage. Living... So, you know, the living wage is just marketing, honestly. Um, but, you know, he's embarrassed himself there. He gets fact-checked pretty brutally. Um, this is another clip. Given that the member of the Conservatives and the Conservative Party have shut down any form of meaningful protest and he shouted across every member of this panel tonight how else are we meant to get our point across other than social media this is johnny mercer complaining about uh, people on social media saying it's collective bedwetting okay. i think he knows he got done there honestly you can tell by his face who's the loser now johnny but yeah there's, there's a couple more i want to talk about you know and this is this is one where um, he just argues across the panel, and um, he's done this. He's done this for the second time now to Bridget Phillipson, um, who you know it's not the best at interviews. I'll be honest, but this is really bad. And you know that is the sixth time the Labour Party have committed to spend this money from private schools. It's as not though true. we're all stupid and we don't. Not, no, not but true. your colleagues do. You're it's part of true. the Labour Party, right? No, there are six true. times here, right? Extracurricular activity, mental health workers, five-year post-pandemic yeah. catch-up program. We all want those things, but you can't commit the same amount of money six. Times. Times no, we, ha we and haven't. Expect no, Johnny. People to we keep, haven't. Take you seriously because they just won't. They I'm, have. I've got yeah. them all here, yeah. and that's what you've done. I'm the shadow so, of education, so. Yeah. And it's ironic because he doesn't actually properly lay them out. So, I know what know, I've said, want, and I haven't said that. If you want things that. actually done, and you want your kids to go to a better school, vote Conservative. If you don't. Uh, yes, the Conservatives who have put, you know the uh, class sizes up dramatically, have cut teachers, have cut support staff for teachers. If you want your schools to be better, vote Tories because they've done a great job over the last 13 years. And you just want to hear mother hen and apple pie, then vote for the Labour Party. Mother hen and apple... What is bro talking about? Your kid's education will get worse. I'm afraid that... Can it be worse than it is now? Under Labour, I don't think so. It's just not correct. We haven't. Well, it Every... is true. Can it I is just... true. Can, I, can I answer? Can I please... Can I please... It's the same, can I please answer? I'll just talk over him. I, I, I play my exact game. I just, you know, I, I look at the moderator and say, look, can you shut this guy up? Answer. But you're just going to say can it's I not true. Can I please... Johnny, let her answer. There we go. I'm sorry. I've set out a fully funded, fully costed... He's such a clown, honestly. You know, in class and stuff, this stuff's funny. This is real life. He's an MP, he's an elected official, and he's doing, you know, this sort of clown stuff. Honestly, he probably thinks he's the joker. ...plan for how we will make sure that we get more teachers into our classrooms, provide better mental health support for our children. I'll happily send you and share you that detail after the programme and you... She should really be doing it now. That's, that's, that'll be the key here. Whilst they got the audience here uh, and all the attention, they should be doing it now. And they could, she, should, she could have counter-punched him really hard. ...can review it in, in great detail. But I wouldn't believe everything already. you read on Conservative Party emails, John. It's not Conservative Kate. Party emails. It's in the newspapers. You've said it five times. Well, that's not true. And he's just, he's just talking over her, and I, I think she should have been a bit more prepared here, but it's just, this is the second time he's done this to her, and he does it to a lot of other people as well. He'll just talk over them. Um, it's just embarrassing. Like I said, I don't know if he's 100% here, but this this last one is just really bad. Um, I mean, did this idea that uh, Bridget came out with, it depends how much money you've got in your bank accounts, whether you get served in A&E, is obviously garbage. I, I've never seen anybody... That wasn't the point I've, no, that, me, wasn't sorry, the point that was making. Finish, well, you're misrepresenting my position. You. I don't think you're misrepresenting you. my position, so I will interrupt you. Can I speak? I don't think she did I say, say that. that. You did say that it depends on how much money you've got as to how quickly I was you saying that No, no, I was saying the principle that it shouldn't... It matters how much money you have in your wallet. Well, if I misspoke, I apologise. The point I was making was that it shouldn't depend on how much you have in your bank account, whether you get access to healthcare. That's an important principle. On how, which the how NHS does it depend how much money you've got in your bank it, account? That's the point. It doesn't. It. That is the point. It doesn't. The, the problem is, you know, what I'd be what I'd be talking about is the fact that for routine operations, people have gone into the private sector um, because they're waiting, you know, uh, months or over a year for like routine hip replacements or knee surgery or whatever. That's the point she should be raising, and I think Starmer's has done that before in PMQs, and he did it quite well. Um, that's what she should be talking about, I think, in the context of this conversation. Matter. Yeah. Well, we're getting down a bit of a dead end here. The point okay. is, okay. the NHS <laughs> is free at the point of need. Yeah. That is an important principle when it was founded in 1948, and yeah. I regard it as just sure. important so today. Your government you... has broken the NHS, okay. and now yep. you quibble okay. about so semantics. The there you go. Boom. 
there we go. That was a, that was a brilliant ending to that one. Uh, your government broke the NHS and you're arguing over semantics and you can hear the audience are lapping it up as well. That's important. And so what she's, you know, shaky, but, you know, I think she got him in the end. And everyone accepts that. You say, do we go into a &E? Yeah, I had a 13-hour stay in A&E this time last year and it's incredible. 13 hours stay in A&E. Do you think that's acceptable, big man? 13 hours over half a day in A&E. And, &E. and you know, I don't know what his medical emergency was, but you know the government's target is meant to be four hours. Waiting 13 hours in A&E is how you die. Incredibly challenging environment. But this idea... You made it a challenging environment. ...that the healthcare system is on its knees. If you bear this in context, maybe in Somalia the healthcare system's on its knees. Not in the UK. This lady here... Has Bro is comparing it to Somalia. You know, I, I'm not going to go as far to say Somalia, Somalia is a failed state, but Somalia is a state which has had, you know, a lot of problems. Comparing the UK, which is meant to be one of the top developed countries in the world, to a country that's developing is the most stupid thing I've ever seen. You know, realistically, the UK should be compared to um, European peers. I know the systems are different. You know, some countries you have to pay out of pocket um, to get healthcare. It depends on which countries you look at, but these are the countries we should be comparing ourselves to. Uh, Canada, for example, even. But comparing ourselves to Somalia, is that how low the bar is? And no disrespect to Somalia, but you know, even if you compared it to Bangladesh, I'd be like, bro, like Bangladesh in its state is in a much different position to where the United Kingdom is. Um, so comparing it to Somalia just absolutely makes no sense. And the NHS is breaking. Uh, for a country, for a developed country to have such bad health care is abysmal. Because she's talked about her amazing <laughs> experience. Now, are And that lady back there talked about her far less than amazing experience. Yes. So, you, you know, you can take your pick. Well, not, I don't know what the lady was, was talking about. Talking about He's just struggling, honestly, the glass clown. A &E. condition, But we talked about uh, a heart attack here uh, and something that, that was life-threatening, had a, had, a, had a very good experience of the A&E uh, system. You go I mean, yeah, if you survive a heart attack, it means the healthcare service has, has done its job really well. But, you know, for most people, it's not they're just having a heart attack. They need routine operations done. That's what the NHS really does. Um, you know, routine stuff, making sure that, you know, if you, if you might have cancer, they can do scans and things like that. It's not just about the life-threatening stuff here. You're absolute moron. Go to some GPs, yes, you, you know... You, you... It's not some GPs, it's, I think it's the vast majority of them. You will struggle sometimes to see a GP because of the amount of work they've got coming in and the... The cuts that you have made to, like, GP services and things like that. Incredible rocket in usage of health services. Yes, that is true. But generally speaking, if you have to see a GP that day, you will go and see it. So cap. That's cap. I, I, until I see numbers, I, I think that's cap. Been around all the surgeries in Plymouth to, to, uh, to make sure that that's the case. I'm sure you did. You went to every GP surgery in Plymouth to make sure that's true. I'm 100% sure you did that. Record when it comes to investment, can I just ask the, answer the investment question? If the Conservatives are intent on this... Well, bro's just monologuing at this point. ...destroying the NHS, they're doing a pretty bad job at it because it's actually getting more money going into it now. It's Where's the money going? Is it actually going to the NHS or is it going to, to private healthcare? Where's that money actually going? That's what I'd want to know because it's not going to wages. It's not going to new equipment. Um, it's not going to hire new people. Where's that money going? ever had in its history. Now, you can have a conversation and say anything you like is underfunded. You could say the military is underfunded, but the question is... It is underfunded. That, that's actually true. You, you're balancing that against all these other things. Where do you stop? And you've got people on the other side of the argument, like Kate, saying, are we actually paying too much at the moment? So you go and knock on I doors in Plymouth. I didn't say we were paying too much. I question where, you? Just where the outcomes we are, right? are so you when you're funneling so Plymouth. much in. Johnny, but all you are is another chump. Not really, no. So you I, I think, you know, fair enough, we're, you know, I don't know if people would right now, but if you said to people, look, we're going to increase your tax slightly and that money's going straight into the NHS and this is exactly where it's going to go, it's going to hire this amount of staff, etc. I don't think people will be that much against it. But the problem with taxes in this country is we pay a lot in taxes, especially kind of lower and middle earners, um, and we have no idea where that money goes to. It's like a black hole because everything here sucks. The roads, uh, the infrastructure sucks. Um, the, the healthcare service sucks. The schools suck. Um, nothing in this country works anymore. You have to think about all of the other contexts that it's, it's sort of sat within, and are we getting a good health service? I don't accept that we have a health service that is on its knees or disgraceful. I think it's got a huge challenge because we're trying to provide healthcare free at the point of need. But on the whole, people, the vast majority of people get an amazing service at, say, South. The vast majority of people do not because they're waiting, you know, ridiculous amounts of time just to get routine operations. That's, that's the problem. You know, if you, you know, those people who are older, you know, they need a lot more help and the, the NHS simply is not doing it. It's not the NHS's fault. It's because guys like this have just completely destroyed it. Um, honestly, I'm just, it just astounds me. I, th I think the moderator should have stepped in here because he monologued for almost three minutes straw manning and talking over people.
it's it's just awful. Honestly, it's absolutely awful. And I, I think the BBC needs to get better moderators in. I know a couple of a couple of people. I don't know if they'll be willing to do it, but um, yeah, you know, sign me up for that. I'll start moderating this stuff. Honestly, it's just bad. So so bad. Um, but anyways, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. Now you've got all the time in the world to play golf. Hmm. Whoa!